we are going to talk next about the UC, Ber Lab UC Berkeley Laboratory roster tool. And I've invited um, Diana Cox and her team at IT Services um, to view this because this is a very interesting and important tool that Berkeley has developed that has enabled um, compliance for um, specifically for the laboratories. It enables the laboratories to know to add people to a list and know who have gotten training in targeted courses particularly in laboratory safety and fundamental training, um, using web services to update um, that, and from, um, their, that that tool that they've created. So um, hopefully uh, that is a little bit of an explanation. I know at my campus it's very important. My the, Our vice chancellor wants us to get this here, but it's not just something that's important to our campus. I can see this being a very important system-wide tool. So, with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass control over to Tim. So Tim, you should, in just a second, be able to get a, um, a little information about um, having control. And if you can click on the Quick Start button and then share your desktop, we should be able to see and hear um, the presentation. So go ahead, Tim. OK, I'm looking for the Quick Start button, and I'm not seeing. Oh, there it is. OK, share desktop. And all right, so you guys should see um, the lab roster tool here. Mm -hmm. Everybody see it? We see it. Excellent. So currently it's showing a professor by the name of Carolyn Bertozzi. She's a superstar here, but I'm going to switch to a Nobel Prize winner. Uh, in 2013, Randy Sheckman won the Nobel Prize for medicine. Um, he discovered some protein pathway, et cetera. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but he's a big time PI. And so I'm going to find him along the list. So you'll see here as I'm scrolling down the list, we have all the principal investigators on the campus, regardless of their discipline, shown here as um, a person with a lab or a space that has uh, laboratory type things in it. It could be a shop space. It could be a lab space with a shop, et cetera. So they're all in here. And they're entered manually by the keepers of the program here. Um, so backing up a little bit, as I find the Sheckman Lab, there he is. Uh, this is a tool that we use to show members of a laboratory. Each member has been added by somebody else who's already a member in the laboratory. And once the list is complete, every time a person pulls up this person's roster, or this professor's roster, three training course statuses are shown. You have the Lab Safety Fundamentals. We call that EHS 101 here on the Berkeley campus. And it queries the UC Learning Center in real time looking for a completion or um, a non-completion. You know, it just looks for the record for that course for this particular person. And if they have never taken it and show no interaction, it shows a no. If they've taken it and they're within the three-year cycle, um, then it shows a yes. And if it's coming close to the end of the three-year cycle, there show, it shows a note. So this person's coming up um, as of 10-21-2014. These are the three courses that we require of all lab safety or all lab personnel, EHS 101 Lab Safety Fundamentals. The Hazardous Waste Program, it's a tool that we have um, that allows a user to get the mandated training for hazardous waste handling and allows them then to open up the program after they complete the training. Um, to print out a label and to call for pickups. And then we have our local Coupa, which requires uh, hazardous materials spill response training and refresher every year. And so we report on these three things, but there are other reporting functions that our inspectors can use to get a handle on things like biosafety or radiation safety or laser safety or other discipline-specific required training. So um, our people enter the PI and then once the PI is added, he or she can then add other people to the, to the roster. And then once a person is added to the roster, that person can then also add or remove other people to the roster. So your status as a person on the roster allows you to add or remove people. You can also assign a role. Um, so we have a no bench work feature, an emergency contact feature or role, and a lab safety contact. And so whichever ones you click, these are the ones, these are the roles that are going to show. And um, every time there's a change, the query runs again, right? So it's a real-time query to the LMS. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see. 
person can add new members to the roster by just clicking this button. I'm going to add myself to this list. Hopefully I'll show up. We get a lot of error. We get a lot of errors, people not um, putting in the last name first. I don't know why that's been programmed, but that's a requirement for this. And boom. It's adding me to the roster. And soon I'll be It may take a little bit of time. Um, OK, I've been added to the roster. Where am I? There I am. And now it's running the query again for everybody. And I should show a yes for everything. <laughs> I'm in compliance. Oh, yeah. OK, so now when it's done, um, or I'm sorry, let me add, let me talk about a little bit some of the other features here. I can also show titles, right? So if a person in the, uh, on the list has an HR designation and a, and a title, that would show. Um, many people just don't. And you know, so the titles aren't typically shown. We can show what department they're in. All of these guys are in molecular and cell biology. Um, we can turn that on or off. And then we could also t turn off the roles, too. But the default is show works and show roles. There's also a history function. So it shows every interaction and who did it and when. And then there's a function that says click here if the lab roster is current. And that's good for compliance because if somebody gets added today and the roster isn't marked current, it's going to show current from the last date. So you might have two different dates. So here you have a date here. That's the real marked current. But it looks like Bob Lash actually did it this morning, too, um, after he added Renan Eduardo Aparicio. All right, so um, let's see some of the other features. Ah, yes, there are links to the training resources here at the bottom. So if there are any questions or comments, this is our departmental training email. People can call in and say, hey, I got the, you know, my training isn't showing, right? And it can trigger a query or, or trigger a need for us to look at the LMS about something. Maybe they didn't complete it or maybe there's a, a name conflict, right? You have a person with the same name and they've been added incorrectly or some other conflict that we can use to figure it out. So this tool right here really drives a lot of the cleaning up of the records in the learning management system and allows for people in the lab to compare completions with each other, allows the PI to take a look and see um, at a moment's notice you know, how they are doing with respect to compliance and allows the lab safety contact, Bob Lesh in this case, um, to drive training to get it done by his people. Right? And invariably, we're going to get calls because maybe somebody claims that they've completed training and, and it's not showing, or again, some other conflict might arise related to access to the UC Learning Center. And this tool drives those queries to us, and we can be more proactive with serving our clients. Instead of them just dropping it and saying, ah, this system sucks, they're now showing something on the roster that's important, and we get prompted to follow up and fix the problems. And it's actually been really useful. So um, this is a link to the UC Learning Center. And there's two ways people get into the UC Learning Center at the Berkeley campus. One of them, or actually three ways. One of them is by way of a record in the HR system, right? And there's two possibilities there. There's just a regular employee status or volunteer status. That's a formal employee status in the HR system. Or they get added to what's called the affiliate feed. Um, they, feel they get an affiliate status in the HR system, and both of those feeds go up to some total, and they get added to the UC Learning Center automatically after, they get, after they've gotten added to the HR system and gotten their local credentials. Um, but there are other people, like students and others, who aren't getting HR records, and they need access. And so this link goes to a process that our guys created here at eh &S that serves now the entire campus. Um, that checks to see if a person has a UC Net ID. And if they do, and the UC Net ID, if you don't know, is the system-wide identifier that's layered on top of the local IDs, like the student ID and the UID and the CalNet ID or whatever you call it. There are a variety of, a variety of numbers floating around that um, identify a person at different levels in the system. So a student gets a UC Net ID. Okay? And so this process that I'm pointing to right here um, looks to see if a person has a UC Net ID. If they do, it then checks to see if 
through web services to see if uh, the person has a UC Learning Center account already. And if they don't, it creates an account drawing on the data from the local identification system, the LDAP. And then they get automatically put into the UC Learning Center and can access it only through this link as opposed to the regular portal that other people can access if, access it if they have a HR system record. But invariably, a lot of people don't have, um, or they, they don't get in, right, even with this. And so there are some other conflicts. And I'm sure those of you who have been administering the UC Learning Center understand the, the variety of conflicts that can, that can cause problems with somebody getting access to the system. And so in learning about the conflicts as, I, as I've been dealing with these people who don't get access over the past few years, I realized that there is a pattern and some, and some typical conflicts that people have. And I've created this problem solver using Storyline, which basically queries no, I don't want to start again. Uh, basically queries the individuals who aren't getting access to figure out what their issue is. So somebody, let's pretend. Um, how about Justin? Who are you? What are you? Are you there? Gee, what am I? Uh, what am I? Like, take a look at the list and pick something. Oh, the hard one. I'm a postdoc visiting scholar visiting student researcher. All right. Are you a U.S. citizen? No. No, you're not. Have you completed your required human resources process? Ooh. Sure. Yes? Uh, yes. Do you have a social security number? Oh, oh, I don't have a social security number. Okay, you have to wait. By the way, somebody coming in from another country has to wait 10 days for Homeland Security to approve their arrival and being able to stay in the country, and then only after they're approved by Homeland Security can they apply for a social security number, which would allow them to be paid in this country. And so some researchers coming from overseas have to wait up to a month to get their social security number and then for, for an employee record. And, and the HR system here, anyway, a social security number is required, and it will block the creation of a UC Learning Center account until they get that social security number. So if you say no, then you get a rec then you get um, a message. You require a manually created temporary account. And so, again, this helps us provide access. And what we do is create access through a back door. Um, and they can use it to take training. And um, once they get their social security number and it gets added to the HR system, uh, they let us know and we merge the two accounts. And then after they're merged, the roster uh, shows the um, it shows the, the training courses. The roster does not pull from manually created accounts. So that also drives people to follow up because they've been using the UC Learning Center with temporary accounts, and they're able to take all the training. But hey, it's not showing on my roster. Well, that's because you're, we're still waiting for your social security number. When you get it, please take it to HR, and then let us know, and we'll merge the two, and then it will show yes. And so we solve a lot of these problems and are the heroes every day when people show from nothing to yes, like, all right, we fixed it. You know, so it's actually bringing a lot of positive attention to my office because we're able to sew up people's issues and help them show that they're in compliance right, with the particular training courses. OK, so that's a quick overview of this roster tool. Does anybody have any questions? Tim, can you show um, yourself being removed or being fired from the Sheckman lab? Oh, laboratory? yes. I don't belong to Randy Sheckman's lab. I'm not a Nobel Prize <laughs> winning researcher. So I'm going to remove myself using a little trash can here and click OK. And I'll go away, and then the whole query runs again. And can you also show us how um, each of the laboratories are considered, I guess, like a um, a suite of rooms, and so there. Right. I know we talk about the profile app, which is kind of similar to managing people, which is the roster in this case, but also location. Okay, so every PI has a room or a series of rooms associated with him or her, and so if we were to select this one PI, Randy Sheckman, and then I click the rooms tab up at the top here, it's going to show the various places where he has space, and this helps us with inspections, right? Because then we can know we can know that oh, he's also in. 475, 475D, and 475DB, these are all places that we'd want to go inspect for Randy Sheckman and not just um, the one, right? So one lab might occupy four or five different rooms, and there might be different hazards in each room. And this also is important for LHAT because the hazards in a space are what's important for the LHAT program. 
um, which then allows us to get a handle on what PP is required for work, PPE is required for working that individual space. Um, and then there's another feature called reports. So the first thing you do is select a PI on the roster, then you can look at his rooms or her rooms, and then you can run a report. And what this is used for, this right now is rather raw, but it does a query per name for all courses that have been completed in the LMS, and it creates this huge list, right? And so we're working on honing that down to just the specifics um, because it's showing, you know, say a completion of the hazardous material spill course, and then it's showing, you know, ones from the archived classes, and then it shows also, I don't know where it is, but um, uh, it shows the uh, completion from the record keeping higher level course that I've got, you know, which captures from all the different versions of the class, et cetera. So this is really long and unruly, but it's also used with the tablets that our inspectors walk around with. They can pull up a lab and look at all of their training and then say in, if they're in a BSL-2 facility, they can look for biosafety and laboratories for a particular person or some other course that isn't on, um, you know, that, that's not on the main roster, right? Hey, Jim, three that are required of everybody. Yes. Uh, I just have a quick question. Uh, sure. On that report you just showed, does that show all of the training the person's ever taken? So uh, it whether does. safety or not? Okay. Did you? Because yep. we're we're build, building a similar tool. I don't know if you have talked um, for UC wide, but my my question is, did you have any concerns about showing all of the training when you did that, or or do you? Um, have it's public knowledge. It's only that feature. The report feature is only for people who are in the H and S department. Okay. okay, so it's not shown to the public at large. It's only for the inspectors primarily and the auditor that we have, the compliance officer that we have here, for her to quickly look and see what they've got across the board without having to go dig in the LMS and run a report for each person. So the PI only sees uh, specific courses that you guys related to safety? The PI only sees this feature right here, the main roster and the rooms. The PI does not have the report. It's just for eh and right now. And because we're, we're kind of in a similar effort with this, um, I know Stuart said in the past that we'd be able to work with you guys. Is that still an option? Absolutely. In fact, I had a conversation with a person in the College of Engineering at UC Riverside who um, heard from her new supervisor, Ron Coley, who used to work here, um, that we had this tool and she wanted a, a little review of it. I showed her. and. Um, you know, suggested that it best be implemented by way of the EHS office, and so, yeah, we're facilitating the sharing of that, and we're very interested in sharing. Um, how and we share it, don't know yet. It's either sharing the code or programming together. That's all yet to be worked out. But yeah, we want to share this as much as people want it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so good. Go ahead. Call. Is that Diana? Go ahead. Oh yeah. No, I was just saying we'll, we'll be in touch because. Um, you know, as you know, we do some of the, the EHNS. Well, we do a lot of the EHNS technologies uh, UC wide. So I think if we work together, we can figure out the best way to to implement this. Yeah. So perhaps you're familiar with Stuart McMacken, one of our IT guys here at EHNS. Yeah, Stuart, Stuart and I work together a lot. So I'll, okay. I'll... So then he is the one he can talk your ear off about this forever. So I, love... I would just have you continue to talk to him. Cool. And he's been told that we want to share, and so you shouldn't get any pushback or stalling at all with respect to that. So Tim, this is this is just such an awesome system and I just you guys feel lucky to have it and I know you've had it for a couple of a while. A while and it's helped about a with year and a half, I think. A year and a half. It's helped with the UC Regents Agreement. Um, and I just want to make sure that we're we're making use of our time right. I know that Diana and her team probably have to leave to attend another conference call. But I did want to ask um, if there's one or two things you wish you could change about the system that you can share with the group, what do you would you what would that be? Oh gosh, I mean, I think I answered this question for you before, and right now I'm so pleased with it because it's driving the cleaning up of the data, and it's driving training, and it's, I mean, to me, it's a godsend, right? Because now I can say, get your people on your roster, and once they're on there, problems will arise, and we can help you with them, right? So it's prevent, it's allowing us to collaborate closely with people in a, in a laboratory space to get their compliance in you know, in order. And the tool itself can be used to run reports that can be shared with deans and directors of chair or chairs, et cetera. And, you know, we have real information that's, that can come down from higher levels to show to PIs, et cetera. Um, 
so that they can begin to be intrinsically motivated to participate as opposed to just saying, ah, safety and training, ah, blah, blah, leave me alone. Um, so now there's this record record keeping and real time tool that's very very useful for everybody and it's simple to use. So I really don't have anything off the top of my head that I would want to see changed. Um, one thing I guess could be you know honing in on the report feature and just providing you know specific activity codes that are found in the LMS so that the um, query can call on specific things as opposed to everything, right? And all the things that are fed up to from various courses as well. So that's something that I'd like to see improved upon. Mm -hmm. And perhaps some features for, um, uh, you know, a, a role perhaps for people like a department safety coordinator or principal investigator to see something like this report coming from the LMS would be an important thing to do. Cool. Very good. Tim. Thank Jim, you. Jim, Gary McPherson. Uh, hey, um, yes. first of all, great job. Uh, by the way, and I've heard about your system, and we'll be looking to replicate. I think our, it's already in the process. So yeah, we've um, already borrowed their code. Yeah, so thank you very much for, um, for lack of better terms, giving birth to this system because it is um, it, it's a real um, valuable asset, and, and we appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for saying that. I give and the credit that. to Stewart and his crew. I mean, they came up with the idea and made it happen, and it's uh, it's been a really positive thing. It's just amazing. And I can see it being powerful enough to go even beyond lab, just general lab, laboratory safety training queries. I, I know we talk a lot about labs and PIs and, and whatnot, but this is um, coding that can actually be used to check training for just non-laboratory areas and general safety or whatever we want it to be. Right. So it can be expanded, I mean, outside of the laboratory um, to, say, shops or offices. I mean, of course, it can be, it doesn't necessarily have to be limited to people who are working in laboratory spaces, but that was the original intent. Um, but clearly, it has implications or uses beyond the laboratory world. Well, very good. Does anybody have any questions for Tim before we move, we move on with the next item, which is actually quite related to this? Any questions for Tim on the UC Berkeley, what we call the laboratory roster tool? You know, I'm sorry, this is Jason at UC Davis. I just have one other, one quick question I was thinking. Um, with the change in the LMS, because Tim, you're saying this, this pulls the records from some total. Yep. If they change the LMS to a different system than, than some total, I'm, I mean, is this, is this, this will be able to, to change with it? Uh, yeah, I think one of the primary requirements for a new LMS, and I'm sure Nancy will say yes to this, is that mm -hmm. the simple, documented web services interface is required. It's one of the basic primary requirements. And from what I've heard from the people who've programmed this and the other things that query the LMS is that some total is terrible at documenting their web services. Right. And they had to figure it out on the fly and meet way more than they thought they would need to with the people at some total. So It'll probably the answer be to your question is yes. And um, you know, the new LMS, if there is going to be a new company, would have to, I would hope, um, have simple and clean and documented web services process for our IT guys to match, to use to continue with this program and others. Cool. Thanks, Tim. Right. Yep. Any, anybody else? We do have to make sure we move on to the next item. So thank you, thank you so much, Tim. That's awesome, and, I, and I'm pretty sure you're going to get a bunch of phone calls. Please do. Please call, send emails, <laughs> ask us. You know, the more interest we have, the higher this will become. You know, the sharing process will become a priority here, and uh, so if you're interested and you want access to this, please let me know, and I'll help make it happen. Cool. Awesome. Awesomeness.